Hello and welcome to today's episode of Anglicare Church to You. I'm Mark Pentecost from Anglicare and I'm here at Dudley Ford House, one of more than 20 Anglicare residential care homes in Sydney. A key part of the spiritual and community life of our homes is our weekly church services and the Christian care offered by our chaplains and pastoral care workers, both paid and voluntary. But of course, Anglicare not only creates homes for Christian community, but we also want to bring Christian community to the homes of people who can't come to church. And part of Anglicare at Home's commitment to its clients is to provide chaplaincy and pastoral care support. So whether you've moved into an Anglicare home or village and made it your own, or you've invited Anglicare at Home into your home, we want to share with you the love of Jesus, as we also assist you with your tasks of daily living. Today's episode of Anglicare's Church to You focuses on our response to the love of God. And again, we will see two responses to the love of Jesus. We're looking today at Luke chapter 7, and particularly at a woman who wants to thank Jesus for forgiveness in the most costly and loving way she knows how. But keep an eye out for Simon the Pharisee, who stands as a sad contrast to her. Our Anglican chaplains in today's service of Holy Communion are our two lead chaplains for residential care, Rhys Old and Paul James. We hope that you enjoy today's service, and more importantly, that you would know the wonder of forgiveness of sin, which overflowed in wonderment and love for Jesus in this woman. We too can sing with the same spirit of this unnamed woman, amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Welcome everybody to our service of Holy Communion today. We're so glad that you can join with us. If you have access to one of our Anglicare service cards, our service is found on the gold card entitled, A Service of Holy Communion. Today we're going to be hearing from God's Word by reading the Bible, and we're going to be praying to God together. We will sing praises to God and confess our sins to Him. We will remember Jesus' death and resurrection by celebrating Holy Communion together. We start our time of praise, proclamation and prayer with our first hymn. Jesus shall reign wherever the sun does its successive journeys run. His kingdom stretches from shore to shore till moons shall wax and wane no more. Yeah. 
now prepare ourselves for our time of hearing God's word by praying together the prayer of preparation. If you have the gold service of Holy Communion card, our prayer is at point one. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. At point two on our service cards, we come to the two great commandments. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. A second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so we say together, Lord, Lord, have have mercy mercy on us and and write write your your law in our hearts by your your Holy Spirit. Spirit. We are now going to have the Bible reading. Our Bible reading today comes from the essential Jesus. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. One of the Pharisees invited Jesus to dine with him, and Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Now there was a woman in the city who was a sinner, and when she found out that Jesus was having dinner at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfumed lotion. She stood behind Jesus near his feet crying, and her tears began to wet his feet, and she started to wipe his feet with her hair, and to kiss them, and to anoint them with the lotion. When the Pharisee who invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, If this man was really a prophet, he would realize who she was and what kind of woman was touching him, that she is a sinner. And Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he said, go ahead and speak. There were two people in debt to a certain moneylender. One owed him the equivalent of five hundred days' wages, the other fifty. Neither of them was able to pay, and so the moneylender forgave both debts. Which of them, then, will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who was forgiven more. He said to him, You have judged rightly. And turning to the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not provide water for my feet. But she has been wetting my feet with her tears and wiping them with her hair. You gave me no kiss. But from the time I arrived she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with lotion. And so I say to you, she has had many sins forgiven. That is why she loves much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who were reclining at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, Your faith has rescued you. Go in peace. We will now have the sermon. It's nice to get an invitation to a special event, isn't it? When I was studying in ministry, I was very honoured to receive an invitation one day from the Archbishop to come and have dinner at his home, along with all of my classmates from college. I wonder what's the best invitation you can ever remember receiving? Well, in this story from the Bible that we just heard, a man called Simon invites Jesus to his house for a meal. Jesus, by this time, was very popular. People everywhere were hanging on his every word. 
But he'd ruffled the feathers of the religious leaders of the day because he was becoming more popular than they were. So one of those religious leaders, a man called Simon, gives Jesus an invitation to dinner at his house. And he invites him along in order to find out a little bit more about him. This wasn't a private dinner for two, though. It was a bit more like a public meeting, where some of the people from the town were able to come and listen in on the conversation so that they could hear what Jesus was on about, too. But the people from the town who had come to listen would have been all gathered around the walls of the house as Jesus and Simon and perhaps other special guests reclined at the table. Well, amongst the people there that night around the walls of the house was a woman with a very bad reputation amongst the townspeople. We're not told exactly what her bad reputation was about, but we do know that everybody knew about it. And this woman came into the room crying, and crying so much that the tears were running down her face and dripping down onto the feet of Jesus. And when that happened, she got down and started wiping his feet with her hair. She was so full of sorrow for the way that she had lived her life. And in her sorrow, she has tracked Jesus down and she has come to him. If I was Jesus that night, I think perhaps I might have thought, uh, felt a little bit uncomfortable that a woman with such a bad reputation was doing this to me. But Jesus wasn't. Actually, it was Simon who was more uncomfortable that this was actually happening in his house. That this man, Jesus who was supposedly a respected teacher, would let a woman like this get so close to him and even to let her wash his feet and wipe them with her hair. Well, Jesus knows that Simon is sitting there passing judgment in his mind on both of them. And so Jesus tells Simon this story, A story about two men who owed money to the same moneylender. One owed a huge amount, the other owed a tiny amount compared to the first one. But while their debts were unequal, they were both in exactly the same position with the the moneylender. They both had a debt that they could not pay. And then, in the story, in an unimaginable act of grace and generosity, the moneylender decides to cancel both their debts. He's going to wipe the slate clean and neither of them will owe him anything anymore. And then Jesus asks Simon to decide which of these two men do you think will love the moneylender more? And Simon answers, he supposes it would be the one who had the bigger debt cancelled. And Jesus commends him for answering correctly. But then he shows Simon that the two men who owed money were just like Simon and the woman in his house. Her loving act towards Jesus showed how much she knew she needed to be forgiven. But Simon's actions showed that he had no idea that he needed to be forgiven at all. Jesus says, you see this woman, Simon, this woman, I came into your house and you didn't give me any water for my feet. 
And that was just basic custom and good manners for a host to provide water for his invited guest to come in and have their feet washed when they arrived after coming in off the dirty road. Simon hadn't even uh, extended this basic welcome to his special guest. And yet the woman had gone overboard in using her own tears and hair to do what Simon hadn't done. It was also a basic custom to kiss an invited guest when they came, when they came to your home. Simon didn't offer Jesus a kiss when he arrived, but the woman kissed not Jesus' hand or his cheek, but his feet. An inv invited guest would also be offered some oil, like olive oil, to put on their head to freshen up after their journey. And again, Simon had done nothing like this for his invited guest. But the woman had lavishly poured perfume on Jesus' feet. You see, Jesus is praising the sinful woman and condemning Simon, the respectable religious leader. And he says, therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. For she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. You see, friends, by not welcoming Jesus as the most important invited guest... Simon shows that he doesn't believe that he needs forgiveness. He thinks it's only people with a terrible reputation, like the woman, who need forgiveness. And he is like the man in the story who didn't show any love to the money lender who forgave his debt. But the woman's actions towards Jesus so that she knows what a great debt she owed God because of her life of sin. Friends, when Jesus died on the cross, he did so to pay the price to cancel the debt of every one of us, the debt that every human being owes because of our sin. And in Jesus, God has invited us to accept his forgiveness by welcoming Jesus into our lives as we believe and trust in what he has done on the cross to forgive us our sins and to welcome us into eternal life. And friends, that is the best invitation that we can ever hope to receive. Amen. We are now going to sing a hymn. Please stand as we sing together, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood?
Affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. These are the things that Christians have believed for the last 2,000 years. So let's say these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to a time of prayer where we will pray for ourselves, our community, and the world. Firstly, a prayer for all people. God of love, make your way known to the people of our world, your saving power among all nations. Guide and govern your church by your Holy Spirit so that all who call themselves Christians may be led in the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are afflicted or distressed in body, mind or circumstances. Relieve them according to their needs Give them patience in their sufferings and deliverance from their afflictions. This we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. A prayer for love. Lord, you have taught us that all our works without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. A prayer for God's direction and rule. 
Loving God, without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for all in authority. Almighty God, ruler of the nations of the earth, give wisdom to the Prime Minister of Australia and to the members of Parliament and to all who hold office in this land. Grant that their decisions may be based on wise counsel so that peace and welfare, truth and justice may prevail among us and make us a blessing to other nations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for peace. God of the nations, whose sovereign rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Establish your peace in the hearts of all and banish from them the spirit that makes for war so that all nations and peoples may learn to live as members of one family and in obedience to your laws, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the aged. Lord God, look with mercy on all for whom age and frailty bring isolation and distress. Give them understanding helpers and the willingness to receive what is offered. As their strength diminishes, increase their faith and their assurance of your love. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for the spread of the gospel. We praise you, Lord of all, for the gifts of Christ, our ascended King for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Hear our prayer for all who do not know your love and have not heard the gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Send out your light and truth through the messengers of your word. Help us to support them by our prayers and offerings and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, you have given us grace to agree in these our prayers and have promised that when two or three ask together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us. Grant us in this life knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life eternal. Amen. We stand as we sing together. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
the people of God. But the scriptures remind us that we still sin. We need to confess our sins to God, knowing that God freely forgives us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So please pray this prayer of confession with me. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge with shame the sins we have committed by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for all our misdoings. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that from this time forward we may serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is rich in mercy and forgives our sins when we confess them to him. We read this promise from 1 John chapter 2. I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defence, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. As we come to celebrate Holy Communion together, hear the words of assurance for those who truly turn to Christ. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. From John chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. From 1 Timothy chapter 1, this saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And from 1 John chapter 2, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins. We will now pray the prayer of humble access together at point seven on the service outline. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. All glory and honour, thanks and praise be yours now and always, Lord, Holy Father, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life offered the one true sacrifice for sin, and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, Father, we pray that we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, according to our Saviour's word, may be partakers of his body and blood. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, his almighty Father, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, 
he took the cup and again giving thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ Christ is is risen. Christ Christ will come come again. again. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful. Amen. Sometimes Christians cannot receive the sacrament of Jesus' body and blood when they are sick or when they don't have others with whom they can share communion. God calls us all to genuinely repent of our sins and steadfastly believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our redemption. So we all must remember the great benefits that everyone who repents of their sins and believes in the gospel receives from Jesus' death and thank him for them. Every believer who repents and believes truly eats and drinks the body and blood of our Saviour Christ so that they are saved. They truly eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus by believing in him in their hearts, even though they haven't received the bread and wine with their mouths in the sacrament of Holy Communion. As we finish communion, let me pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Father, Father, we offer offer ourselves to you you as as a living living sacrifice sacrifice through through Jesus Jesus Christ Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We finish our service with this blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the the name name of Christ, Christ. Amen. amen. God bless you all. Let's sing together now. Rock of Ages, cleft for me.
Hi, my name's Andrew Ford, General Manager for Mission Partnerships at Anglicare. God tells us in the Bible not to give up meeting together, but to encourage one another until the day when Jesus returns. We need each other. We need to encourage each other to trust Jesus and to live for him. That's one reason why we have church services and chapel each week in each of our homes. And we have a chaplain and pastoral carers. Meeting face to face, whether one on one or in groups, is important. And I want to encourage you to continue to meet and encourage one another. But you and I know there are sometimes good reasons why we cannot meet face to face. It might be sickness or immobility or other reasons that make, it, make us unable to gather together. And for these times, your chaplains have made available some televised services. We call it Anglicare Church to You. We hope and pray that this will encourage you with God's word and with prayer. These short televised programs don't replace our weekly face-to-face -face meetings. They are meant to be an additional resource of encouragement at times when we want to but we cannot meet together for church. Of course, your chaplain is also available at these times of restricted access. If you need them, don't hesitate to contact them or ask. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.